Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Health Blast Radio. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher of Alternative Medicine and Wellness Radio. It is going to be a great year, 2015. We are going to have several of our guests who are inspirational, telling their stories, sharing a lot of their tips about how to live a holistic life and love it. We all have all kinds of challenges these days, and we say we'll try things, we don't get the greatest results, or sometimes it's just mediocre. But we're going to love to learn to love a holistic life. Isn't that great? We're going to learn that it's great to get up in the morning. It's fabulous if it rains. And it's absolutely incredible that we have these challenges and all of the things we can learn from that. And isn't life just a roller coaster? So thank you so much for joining us. Please check us out on Health Blast Radio on Facebook and also Health Blast 2015 on Twitter. Also, our website, drjeanettegallagher.com, for more information. We also have a women over the age of 50 group starting February 1st, which will be sharing a lot of information about how to help us and ourselves as we are women. We are also caregivers. and We are also part of this world that will be bringing more compassion and empathy towards others. Please do join and please do check it out on our website, Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. And now, back to the show. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the show, Alternative Medicine and Wellness. It's great to be here with you on this uh, end of the summer, as we would call it. It is now the end of August, and it's been a very hot summer. How about in your area? You know, we're looking at so many earth changes these days as we come up on September, and so many people are saying, well, I'm wondering what the energy is going to be doing, and oh, I've just not been feeling so good lately, and even still further, they're saying, my gosh, I don't know what's going on in my world, it just seems to be crumbling, how about you? And I think we, so many people are on so many different levels of having experiences that kind of take them to their knees cause disease, or some people just say, you know, I've just plain had enough of it and I'm ready to check out. How many people have raised their hand lately on that? Quite a few. Some people have raised their hand and says, I'm not so sure, but I'm going to have hope and faith. And isn't that really what we're looking at is how can we balance our energy back up, find the root of some of these things that are going on in our life and saying, can I clear some of these out? so that I can still continue to do good here on the earth. So many people are just saying, you know, I'm not real sure what's going on, but, hey, I'm up for the challenge. And every day, you know, they're up for the challenge, and they keep going with a smile on their face. Isn't that wonderful? So really that's what our goal is, to be able to say, you know, I'm ready to take on the day, and at the end of the day I'm ready to set that day to the side, and we're all good to go. So today my guest is going to be Chris Keller, he is a quantum energy healer who can help us really get to the root of the problem. You know, really, he really stays with you and helps you to get your energy to shift. And his work really affects not only the person, but also when he helps you, he's also helping other people on the earth, and everybody will start shifting. So things will start really creating a much better world. You know when you walk in a room and you say, oh, someone walked in and everybody's irritated and aggravated now and then they walk out and you really have to work to be able to balance that again. That's really what Chris can do. He's able to rebalance that room and rebalance you and say, let's just let all that stuff go. So if you also have any questions, I would also ask you to please call in. We'll be taking callers today. The call-in number is 424-258-9318. And please do remember to push 1 so we'll be able to see you. Well, Chris, you know, I I just, you know, talked to the listeners a little bit about your work. If you could share a little bit about what a quantum energy healer is. You know, we have a lot of listeners who say, I really don't know what those words mean, but, hey, I'm here. Uh, I'm willing to listen and see if there's something else out there other than the standard way I've been thinking for all of these decades. Quantum energy healing is a term that I use to describe the work I do. Now, everybody knows about different types of healing modalities such as Reiki, there's quantum touch, there's EFT, all these different ways of healing modalities. The work that I do is 
sort of specific in a way that it targets what the problem is within a person's body. Let's say you, you have a heart problem. You know, the doctors will say, well, you have heart disease. Well, exactly what is your heart disease? And with the system that I have of pendulum dowsing charts that I've made up, it gets very specific on exactly what the problem is. So, for instance, if you have heart disease, it could tell you that your heart disease may be a parasite within your heart, could be a virus, could be many different things going on. And we even go into the realms of the -the off-the-wall stuff, such as curses and spell and uh, different types of interdimensional negative dark energy that can be involved. Well, you know, uh, just before you came on, I was just sharing with the listeners that really I kind of equate your work to, let's say you're at a party and someone walks in and they've maybe had a car accident and all of a sudden everybody in the room, the energy shifts and it all turns into this craziness, you know, about the car accident and the person. And then when that person leaves, you really need somebody to rebalance that room. And really, that's what you do. You know, you're sort of, you know, you kind of are different places in your life, and you kind of pick up all these imprints and all of these energies, and it's kind of like, oh, you know, some days you just shake your head and go, oh, I don't know where I am. I just want to shake all this off. So really, you know, that's where you first start to help them is what do we need to shake off, you know, to start seeing what's really the root cause. That's a very good way to put it, and in many ways, that's what it is, is just basically rebalancing the body, removing any distraction that might be there from causing the body to to experience perfect health. And it's something that we do experience on, on a daily basis. You'll be going to work, and you've got a headache, and that headache is distracting you from everything you need to be doing. So it's making you nonproductive, not just giving you pain in the head, it's also affecting your work, and it's affecting your life around you. Yeah. You know, I've been living, I had migraines, I probably can say for 40 years and doing dental hygiene work with you're bent over, you know, two inches from somebody's face, whistling machines all the time. And you're working on a pinpoint area on their teeth, you know, with a migraine headache, it's sort of like, you know, oh, you know, sometimes you just get out of there and you go, I can't stand this. I don't want to do this job. I hate doing this. You get out of there and everybody thinks, you know, you've, you're dragging bad energy when really it's, as you say, you've got to go back. It's your headache, you know, that kind of sent that spiral down the road. And it's, if you, you always walk in and you say, if I could just cut this headache off, you know, I can get back to who I was. And I think that's what, what you really look at. That's basically it. It's getting to the very root problem. And generally when there's any kind of health problem at all, anything from depression, anything with anxiety, addiction, no matter what it is, physical, non-physical, there is always going to be some type of negative energy component, whether it could be something along the lines of, oh, let's say, demonic, something Lucifer, and uh, something along that line. Let me talk about Lucifer for a second. This is an energy that I remove out of people on a daily basis, and believe me, it really does exist. I can share one quick story with you. A lady Mm -hmm. came into my office, and she was suffering from a pain in the right side of her abdomen for the last 10 years. They've taken out her uterus. They've taken out her gallbladder. They've done a few other surgeries. She's tried this, tried that. Nothing works. She came into my office and said, okay, Chris, I'm ready to do the hocus pocus stuff. So I looked at her, I used my pendulum, and I told her, I said, you have Lucifer in your ascending colon in your body. She says, okay, I'm game, let's work with it. So I took my pyramid, held it over her head, told Lucifer to leave her ascending colon. And as soon as I did that, she looked at me, her eyes were as big as saucers. She says, Chris, the pain just moved from the right side of my body to the left side of my body. And I looked at her and I said, ah, the game is afoot. We're chasing Lucifer. So I removed (laughs) Lucifer out of the descending colon, out of her transverse. All of a sudden, the pain was gone. After 10 years and all these surgeries, the pain was gone. So these types of energies, they do exist. They are a very big part of our lives. And we live in a, a world of duality, good and bad, light and dark, right and wrong. So that the duality, you have love and light and you have the dark side really can't have one without the other right now things are changing where that might change but right now there is all this negative stuff that goes on in our bodies and it helps to balance out the good if we had no bad stuff you wouldn't know what good stuff is 
So all of these energies are a component. They are a contributor. And we get very, very deep into the whole concept of, of negative energies as to exactly what they are. And it does get very deep. And, and uh, a lot of people look at me with their eyes wide open. They say, Chris, are you serious? What have you been smoking today? But it does get to that point. Exactly. You know, it, it really does because a lot of people have been going to the traditional um, ways of health care and they always would go in, spew for 10 minutes, walk out with something that's going to be a miracle thing and totally forget about the situation at all until, you know, just by taking their pills, they forget about it. And they just show up the next year later to see if they have any difference or not. And it's just such a passive kind of um, way of being able to exist in your own health and your own wellness it's just such a difference and then you know like you said you know when they come to you you think you have three heads well I I think they think I have radar you know when they come to see me because you know they say to me um all these different things and then I really sometimes just ask them two questions you know when has this really started and what was going on in your life then and how many people can actually say that anybody's bothered to even listen to them you know I really think the the biggest thing is compassionate listening sometimes because they will tell you what they need you just have to let them keep going and talking it's just you know how long can you do that you know sometimes whereas you know you can pick up on the energy you know and we don't want to be dismembering by Bodies, you know, like at the doctors, like you say, taking out organs. I mean, I had um, someone had said to me the other day, this woman, she had a terrible pain in her side, and she went to the ER, and they said, oh, well, we really don't see anything, but, it, you know, on the CT, it looks like your bile was sluggish. And I said, since when did a CT show you that bile can be <laughs> sluggish? And I just, I mean... <laughs> I I, I couldn't say it, you know, I I didn't say anything. And, you know, I had suggested some things to the woman and she did them. But she still had this fear in the back of her mind, you know, of, oh, I'm just, maybe I'm missing something, maybe I'm not doing the right thing, or maybe something's not right. And what if I don't do what, you know, those people said to do, would I be hurting myself? And she went on and had her gallbladder out when really she probably never needed it, you know? So I think that brings it right back to the root is what you're saying is right there was not her gallbladder or her pain. It was was the root of her fear. And where did her fear come from or where did it go? Which goes right back to her story, right? Louise Hay says it best. All health problems are an emotional problem. And, and she's right in a, in a lot of ways. Now, what the emotion does, and, and fear is an emotion, hate is an emotion, being the a victimization is an emotion. There's lots of these different emotions that will ground the problem to you. It's, it's what you hold on to. It's, it's the tether that keeps it there. So in a lot of ways, if, if you can release the emotion, if you, if you can get rid of the fear and, and any other emotion that comes along, sadness, sorrow, and, and all these other emotions, then it's a lot easier to, to work with a health problem. It, then you're willing to, to let it go. So the, the emotions are a big part of things. The, the, the fear is, is one of the biggest ones because ultimately you, you have some kind of health problem. You're going to go to the doctor or anybody, and your biggest fear is what's this person going to tell me? What are they going to find? So mm-hmm. we all have a fear-based concept within us, but as soon as we can learn to drop it and just know that whatever it is, it's going to be fine because you're going to a person who's going to help you, that, then that fear can, can start to lift and, and things can you know flow a lot better energy-wise within you. Now also, too, can you talk a little bit about conscious emotions and fears and um, unconscious, because some people, you, they will seem to be the happiest, most joyful people in the entire world, but they're still the ones that have the heart attack and croak on the treadmill, right? Let's take Robin Williams, for instance. There's the funniest guy in the world on the right. outside, but on the inside, what was going on within him? I mean, we can only imagine what would prompt somebody to take their own life like that. There is a lot of these people who just are the funniest in the world. They're the most outgoing, and, and they're working so hard to try and, and hide what's going on within them 
when they get home, the lights are off and the booze comes out and all of a sudden they turn into somebody very depressed and somebody who doesn't want to be around anymore. In, in a lot of ways, we, we all go through that, where we put on this fake front, where we want to make sure people think we're happy so they don't think badly of us. We, right. You don't want somebody to know that you just went through a breakup, so you put on this brave face and you, you tell some, some extra jokes to try and compensate for it. And we are all basically guilty of that in one way, shape, or form at some time in our lives. Well, I think it's also, too, um, that mantra out there, fake it till you make it kind of idea. I think that has got to kind of go to the wayside because, really, if you can understand or feel or sense other people, that really makes you vulnerable but also allows them to feel vulnerable, too. And doesn't isn't that really where we're all headed, you know, in the earth changes and everything? I think we're not so, – Supposed to all just be sitting back, hey, I'm my pompous self in my little tower. Don't anybody come touch me with any of your energy. That's not really what it's all about because, it, it, you know, you can explain. Energy is all around us. We're all encompassing, and everyone affects everyone else. And, you know, sitting in that little glass house, well, I don't know if that's going to work. Do you? Yeah, we, we can all uh, relate to the words when, when you're standing close to somebody. I can feel their energy. It doesn't feel very good. So when we talk about energy, we all sense it. We all use it. We all feel it, just in some people more than others in different ways. But most people can feel somebody else's energy. You can just tell by the energy coming off that person that they're coming across as being okay, but they're really not. You can just kind of sense it. It's a kind of a... Um, almost an an empathic way of of getting to know a person where by feeling their energy. So two people who meet for the first time, of course, you shake hands, you're cordial, you give a little hug, but the energy that's coming off of that person might say, stand back because this person is not very nice. Right. And sometimes, though, really, that's where the gateway is to healing, is when you're allowing, both people are allowed to be vulnerable, because, you know, there's even books out now about the history of the placebo. Is it really a placebo, or really is it just allowing in that space to be heard and to be able to be open and, you know, to be able to exchange energies or to be able to sense those, right? If you came into my office and I said, if, if you take this gold coin, and you rub it between your fingers twice a day, the pain in your neck will go away. So you do this. You take this gold coin or whatever it is, uh, Mm -hmm. a head of cabbage named Ralph. It doesn't matter. You take something home and you, you do it. I give you the instructions. And your neck pain goes away. What does it matter what did it? The neck pain went away. So is it a placebo? Is it mind over matter? Did the energy change within your body? Well, most likely, of course, the energy changed in your body because you allowed it to by taking in what I had to say. The placebo thing, there is validity to it. So if you go in for, let's say, to trial a a new type of medication or something, and five people get the medication, five people get the placebo, and those five people who get the placebo, their health problem goes away. It doesn't mean that there's no validity to it. That just means that they willed, they allowed that placebo, that pill, whatever it was, to work on that problem and make it go away. So, Chris, can you talk a little bit about how you do your work? Um, The words dowsing and the words sacred geometry, very foreign to a lot of people. They're starting to understand Reiki now. I think massage really, when it first started, you know, people getting massages, and that was really the best thing ever because so many people just needed human touch. You know, you can see people when they're so frustrated or in pain or angry or whatever, they say, I'm going to get a massage just because they need human touch. But yours is so different, um, and I think a lot of people have not really heard about it yet. The way that mine works, so I'm working with a pendulum, which is dowsing. It's an ancient form of water witching. I'll take a, a stick, and they will go across the land, and the stick will point down and tell you where water is. It's it's the same thing. It's the same thing as muscle testing. It's just asking a question and getting an answer. And and my modality, my way of doing it is with a pendulum. So I use this pendulum over a series of semicircle charts that I have with all these different words, different descriptive areas of the body, and I'll ask a question. So you come in, you say, "My, my hips hurt. Well, then I'll ask the question, where is the lowest level of vitality within the person's body? And the pendulum will point to the hip joints, let's say. And then I'll ask, what is causing low levels of vitality? 
within a set of charts, and it'll tell me that there could be a bone spur, there, there could be calcium buildup, there could be virus, there could be Lucifer. There's many, many different combinations that could come into play. So once I am told that, so let's say it says that there's, a, there's uric acid crystals within the hip joints. Okay, so we know that. Now what do you do? So now I use sacred geometry. And sacred geometry is things like pyramids, circles, cubes, anything that's a geometry is a sacred geometry, and they all contain their own types of energy. So what I will do is I'll take my pyramid, I'll hold it over the person's head. If you're on the phone, I'll just hold it over the phone. You can do this in any area of the world. I have clientele all over the planet. It's, it's amazing how well it works over Skype and over the telephone. They don't just say the words to remove the uric acid crystals from your hip joints. And within a matter of seconds, you will automatically feel a change in the energy of your hip joints. The pain will start to go away. You'll start to feel lighter in that area. You might feel some tingling. And this, this works on, on a good 95% of the people. Of course, there are people out there who are very hard to work on. But for the most part, people do get a very good healing, and, and they get success out of it. So that is the, the main part of the work. It gets a little deeper in certain aspects. We need to do different things, but that is the gist of it, just using a pendulum to find the answer, using the sacred geometry, which increases the energy that you're using. It, the pyramid works as an antenna and an amplifier for the quantum healing energies that we pull in to do the job. And that is so different, if you think about it, from traditional, how can I help my pain in my hip? You know, they are shooting CTs, MRIs, they're doing uh, all kinds of bowel studies, all kinds of blood studies, and they say, oh, I don't know what it is, I can't see it. You know, just like, can you really tell it's sluggish bile on a CT? The answer is no. But, uh, you know, and they just randomly decide to do things so i really think your work is kind of a um well because it's a little window into to be able to try a different option because if the doctor says he really doesn't know hey he's telling you the truth he really doesn't know and sometimes you know when you look at your body over the decades i mean i myself am almost 60 and my body's been through things you know it's had a lot of bumps and bruises and you know, ups and downs all of these decades. So, of course, if you do a CT on me, you're going to find something that's, quote, out of line, something that's misaligned, something that's bigger than it should be or smaller than it should be or, hey, that should be over there or, you know, hey, these blood vessels, they kind of look like a web instead of a channel, you know, that kind of idea. And really, when you say as a patient that, you know, hey, I've got pain there, they're going to look in that area and just see what's, quote, out of normal and then they're going to start attacking those one at a time and really that's not what we want to be doing because once you start down that slippery slope then you as you said with your client you still have the problem sometimes you know you still have the issue you really haven't gotten to what it was so sometimes just taking things in and out because you see it doesn't look right you know um, you can't put them back with energy, it fluxes and it flows. With taking out organs or, you know, doing surgeries, you're kind of maybe overstepped or tipped the cup, so to say. Well, especially if they start removing things and it doesn't make any difference, well, eventually you're going to run out of parts now, aren't you? And <laughs> that's just not, not a good scenario. I always tell people, you know what, if you've got a health problem and it's, it's a chronic one, it's just something that does not want to go away. Of course, you want to go see a doctor, a, a doctor of any kind, naturopathic, homeopathic, allopath. See a doctor. Right. Also see somebody who works with energy because quite often they do complement each other. I'll have clients who will go get a CT scan and they'll come back and say, here's the results. And we'll say, okay, there is something. There is a narrowing of your spinal cord causing a stenosis. Well, now we know that because, of course, there it is. So then it, it's a lot easier for me to go in and, and, and do the energy work to repair it, and it gets us there a lot quicker. Instead of, you know, Sometimes we spend a lot of time just trying to find one thing that's very basic, but there's a lot of things that are in the way that you need to, to get through energetically. So I, I love it when people do get those kind of, kind of tests done, bring in the results. We can work off the results. 
Or sometimes I had one person come in who had a seizure. He went for a CT scan. They could find nothing, nothing there whatsoever. Right. Because there was nothing there. It was an energy problem. You can't problem. see a seizure on it, yeah. That's, that's exactly it. Yeah. This person's soul got disconnected and plugged into the right source because of the ascension process that is happening right now. And many people are going through that. They're feeling times where they're, they're getting very dizzy, nauseous, where they mm-hmm. uh, all of a sudden have to shut down for an hour or so, and their bodies are adjusting to the changing energies. And that is happening. I've seen it with about three people so far. So it is something that is really happening. So it, working on the energy of your body is just as important as working on the physical. You know, let's talk a little bit about that ascension process because a lot of people are saying all of these things are coming up for them right now. And as I said in the beginning of the show, some people are saying, that's just a mountain. I'm not climbing anymore. Raise your hand who's ready to check out, you know. And it's just, um, it is getting to be a lot tougher to be in your body for a lot of people, you know, you know, you get these pains, they just start showing up and they're overwhelming. And I mean, I even know for myself, you know, when you're helping me, you know, man, you know, I'm sitting down and out of nowhere, you know, my arm just feels like somebody just yanked it out and, you know, and it's just a horrendous pain. And you just don't know where it's coming from. But Am I going to run to the doctors? Mm, No. Am I going to go get a CT on it? Mm, No. Because I know that it's something else and time or work and whatever, it will start shifting. But a lot of people get kind of scared and, you know, we're down the drug, you know, the drug or the alcohol or the addiction lane. I mean, I don't know about you, but I live in New Orleans, and I can tell you, the people driving around here are off the wall. And I said to my husband all the time, I said, you know, God, are they drinking that early? You know, and that's true. You know, people are on a lot of drugs these days, and they're doing a whole lot of drinking because their body's in pain, their emotions are off the wall, or something in their life just isn't working. And really, that's where it's all at, right? Well, one of the concepts that I work with, Let's say that you are a person whose vibration is getting higher. You're somebody who is somewhat important in the light world. And as your vibration gets higher, something starts to happen to bring your vibration down. An illness, a pain, something goes on, an addiction happens to bring your vibration down. As your vibration goes up and higher... There are extraterrestrial beings, and whenever I mention this, people roll their eyes, but there is reality to it. I just had John B. Wells on my radio show, we're talking about the ET concept, and and it is very real. These ET beings, when they're here, they're feeding off of our low energy. Okay, there's a certain frequency of energy that is particular to them. As our energy gets higher, they cannot feed off it because it's too high in energy. So, of course, Mm -hmm. you raise in energy, there goes their meal ticket. And as you go up in energy, you start to go into higher dimensions out of their realm. So now they have no access to you for whatever they do, experiments, uh, entertainment. There's, There's a very big list that happens when these ETs are in your life. And a lot of people know what I'm talking about. There's abduction scenarios that happen that I work with on on a very big occasion. So as your vibration goes up, they want to bring it down. They can do things to inflict some type of energy illness on you. Let me give you an example and try to, so you can visualize it a bit. We all have these energy bodies. We call it the aura. And there's all these different, there's the emotional body, the mental body, and there's an area called the quantum body. So let's say they break a bone in your quantum body in your leg. Now you're going to have a lot of leg pain in your real human body for no reason at all because that bone in that body is broken. So let's put that into perspective. You're in a car accident. You have to get your leg cut off because it's so badly damaged, but you still feel the pain in that leg. You still feel the leg as it's there because that leg still exists in that quantum body. Uh, A lot of people call it the causal body. There's different terminology for it. But because it still exists on an energy level, that's why you're still feeling that pain. So if there's uh, something going on in that body, you're going to feel the pain in your physical body. So that's why you need to work on the energy body. You need to work on your energy to clear things up. So once you've cleared that area, 
then you can go into the physical body and see what that problem might be. Um, Chris, we have a caller. Would you like to take a call? Absolutely. Great. Hello, um, caller. Uh, you're on live with Chris. What's your name? Robert. Hi, Robert. You're on live with Chris. Would you like to ask him a question? Hey, Chris. Hi. I've been uh, wondering if you could help me out. I have a nagging pain on the right side of my body underneath my right shoulder blade. A nagging pain. How long has that pain been there for? Probably about a week. So, like a muscle, you know, like you sit wrong or something, and it, it's just... I spend a lot of time in, in a vehicle because I drive all day long. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, let me ask with my pendulum exactly what it is, and let's see if we can clear it out right away. Okay, let's do this. I'm, I'm going to remove Lucifer out of that right shoulder, okay? Let's, let's see if the okay. pain goes away. Here we go. Cut all cords and connections and cast out Lucifer. From the right shoulder, quantum body, and human physical body. Yeah, you tell me when the pain goes away. Actually, not bad. Feels a little better right now. Feels a little lighter. Feels a little, yeah, it feels a little better. Yeah. It bothers me a lot at night when I, when I get ready to go to sleep because it's just there, and I can't change the position, you know, enough to move it. Now, does it affect your sleep? Yeah. Okay, so what's happening here, Lucifer's in there, and he wants to bring your vibration down. So when the, you go to bed, the pain gets a little worse, it affects your sleep, and you don't sleep well, so it brings your vibration down. Okay. okay. Now, there's also going to be some other things involved. There may be some scar tissue, some swelling, and a few different things, but all that stuff should start to go away on its own. But the, the main culprit here is a negative energy. His name is Lucifer. There's also other names of negative energy. There's Zeus and a bunch of others, but that's the one that's mostly involved. Now, somebody could be sending you some negative energy. When we have a negative thought about someone, if there's somebody in your family who's jealous of you or doesn't like you for some reason, somebody you work with, somebody you're always button heads with, if that person has a dark streak in them, and a lot of us do, they can send a negative thought out, and then these dark forces are going to take that negative thought, and because it's sent to you, they're going to come to you and give you a problem. That's the way it works. Mm, terrific. How is that shoulder feeling now? Is it getting a little better as we talk? It's a little better, yeah. Okay, so there's definitely a difference. So ultimately, if, if we did a full session on it, we can get to the very deep problem and fix it for good so it doesn't come back anymore. Okay. All right. So how do we do that? Go on to my website, chriskaler.net, C-H-R-I-S-K-E-H-L-E-R.net, and you can book an appointment online or you can take the phone number there and you can give me a call and we can set something up for you. Okay. And my sessions are only $60, so it's very reasonable and it does work. Okay. All right. I'll go online. Thank you so much for the call. Many blessings Thank to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for the help. Bye-bye. So, Chris, really what you're looking at is that you see a lot of people. It's something simple like that. And there's also people who are difficult. <laughs> Raise my hand. But, um, <laughs> and, you know, I think that um, what we have to understand is it may be simple at the moment for some people, and it may be difficult at a different moment for some people, too. Do you know what I mean? Like, in other words, um, you know when people say they move to a different area and all of a sudden the world is just hunky-dory because maybe all of those energies in the place they were or the work they were doing or the people they were around, they don't have any more. So then it really does change their frequency and they're able to exist with a lot less stuff around them, right? Well, there is one concept called geopathic stress. And what that means is if you're living in a house, and there is a stream of water flowing underneath your house, that will create a current, a field of energy, generally an electromagnetic field, some type of energy that can cause disruption within your house. And if your bed is right over that stream, this is one of the major causes of cancer, is geopathic stresses underneath the ground. And many people who are experiencing cancer, they find if they move their bed or they move to another room or even move out of the house, things start to heal. Things start to get better. 
your geographic location can definitely be an aspect of, of what is causing your ill health. Also, a grounding issue where your body isn't grounded properly to the earth, and it's called the vivaxis connection, and that connects from the root chakra into the core mm-hmm. of the earth. Uh, Dr. Judy Jacka wrote a, a humongous, wonderful book on it that you can source out. She's a naturopathic doctor, did a lot of research on grounding, and did find a correlation to a lot of health problems. So a, a grounding issue can also be a contributor, uh, geopathic stresses. Now here's a concept. Here's one aspect as, as to why grounding is, is important. If you're in a room with a lot of le- electrical outlets, now that electricity, just because nothing is plugged into it, doesn't mean electricity is not coming out. Electricity is still coming out at a very low level. That's not going to give you an electric shock or anything. Now, if your body is not grounded properly, your body is going to absorb that static electricity and build it up, and it's going to create things like fibromyalgia. It's good. It could create migraines. It could create muscle spasms. So if your body is grounded, that electricity will come in and it will exit through the ground. So it is very important for your body to have the, the right grounding, to be in the right area. If you are somebody going through a lot of problems, try spending more time in one area than another. I have one client who has to leave her house five times a day because within her house there are some negative energies that she doesn't want to deal with that are causing the problem. So the geographic location, the house, grounding, all these things can contribute also to a health problem. You know, and also, too, um, we can add to that a situation. I know myself after Hurricane Katrina, when we drove down the main street because we stayed, you know, and it was, we won't go down that little pony ride, but uh, we drove down the street and about a month later, and I said, can you feel the grayness? And someone was with me, and they're like, what are you talking about? I said, this is just so gray. It has a feeling of doom. Can you sense it? And no one really could. But yet when all the people that were coming here to help, they all, when they start talking about it, have this um, sense of, um, I don't don't know what you would call it. They just had that changing sense, as they would always call it. And when you get that life-changing sense, you know, then they go home and then they wonder why they're sick. You know, some of these people have taken that energy back with them and it has negatively affected some people. Yes, when you do absorb, and it's called being empathic, you empath that energy, you bring it in, and it does start to make changes in, in, within your energy, and it does affect you. So if, if you're a person who very easily lets things go, just let it go, like water off a duck's back, you're the one who's not going to be pulling in all these energies and holding on to them and, and getting sick. If you're somebody who always has to worry about things and always has to try and fix everybody else's problems, like me, okay. <laughs> then, then like you me. may be pulling in your, these energies. But there are ways that you can release these energies. And one of them is, is a tool that I carry on my website. It's called a neutralization ring. When you stand over this ring, it's going to start to pull these negative energies that you, you carry on on a daily basis, even just watching the news or seeing something negative going on yeah. on a daily basis, it, it does affect the vibration within your body. It affects your mood, and that in turn starts to affect your health. So a little health problem can then start to become a big health problem. You know, you even wonder about newscasters, you know, always giving that negative news and trying to put a spin on things so that it would be so um, so graphic or so filled with drama, you know, all the time that they – you know, you wonder how they're able to actually do that, you know. But even in our area here, it's it's quite filled with a lot of uh, negativity these past, uh, say, probably past two years. It's really been ramped up here. And you look at people and you go, how could you do that every day, you know? Well, I did some work with a journalist who was researching a demonic cult on how they do their things, and he's trying to get pictures and information well how do you think his health is now he is in a really bad place in really bad shape because now they said okay you want some of this you can have some of it they perform some of their rituals and all of a sudden that's got a lot of problems so it is very possible i had just worked with somebody today up until she was four years old she was used by her parents in ritual demonic sacrifices and i'm not going to get into the specifics 
because it's horrific. And it's something that you see in the movies. It's stuff that you see on the Internet, and it really does happen. And it really does affect a person in a lot of different ways. So these demonic rituals, these sick people who feel they need to be part of this club or this cult, like Bohemian Grove, let's say, and and all these different, the Illuminati, uh, sacrificing children, and that type of thing, all of this has a big effect on the energy component within humanity. Not just one person, but it does affect all of humanity. Well, Chris, we've talked about all the things that can affect us. Let's talk um, in the last uh, 10 minutes about how ways people can turn their own energy also. Let's say you do do clearing and everything, and, you know, where do they go from there? Because obviously, you know, you can turn around and feel super great and walk outside and Lord knows what will hit you. How can people start living a little bit differently now that the world is changing because it it really is changing a lot to be able for people to say how can I do things going forward first of all it's knowledge knowing about these energies and how they work and how they work against you and how you can make it work for you you can very much make these energies work for you it's called the law of attraction so if you put pleasant thought out that you want peace, love, and joy in your life, it will come. Now, it's important to seek out somebody like myself. It doesn't have to be me. There's lots of good qualified practitioners, people who can clear out your law of attraction, make sure there's nothing negative in there. So when you want something good, something bad happens. You don't want that. When you want something good, you want something good to happen. So to find somebody who does good energy work to get a few clearings done and then learn a little bit more about spirituality, whereas, you know, you always want to be bringing in love and light in, into your life. Now, here's for instance. You're driving in your car. Somebody cuts you off. What's the first thing you do? You raise your middle finger and say, F you. Right. Let's change that. So somebody cuts you off, you wave at them and say, bless you. So that energy that you just put out, is going to come back to you tenfold, okay? That's the law of attraction. So if you can put a good spin, a positive spin, a light and love spin on your daily happenings, then you're going to find that your life is going to start to become a lot more pleasant. It's not going to happen overnight. No, no, no. It's not super-duper magic. It is magic, but it's not going to be quite like that. But you will find that more pleasantries will come your way, more synchronicities. So if you start to live in a higher vibration, when you raise your middle finger and say, F you, that's a low vibration. When you wave and say, bless you, that's a higher vibration. Live in a higher vibration. Always take the higher road. Be a nice person. You don't, you don't have to learn how to meditate at supersonic levels. You don't, you don't have to be a, a Ph.D. in quantum energy. You don't have to have that level of knowledge. Just the knowledge knowing that what you give out is going to come back to you and it's going to benefit your life and your family's life. You know, it's interesting you say that about, you know, the car cutting off. I was going down the road one day towards, um, I don't know, it was just on a major road, and there was this truck behind me that kept weaving in and out, in and out, and then he flew around me and then went right through the red light, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I didn't say anything, didn't do anything, didn't respond. And, you know, right in front of me where he turned was to the emergency room at the hospital. So, you know what, you don't know the story of everybody and everything, You just are reacting to what you see going on in front of you. But if you can kind of, like as you said, just let that go for whatever their reasons are that they're doing it, it's not always an affront to you. It's just there, you know. Some people take it on like, oh, well, why did he push me over? Why did he cut me off, you know. And it's kind of like he didn't do it to you, you know. Well, we all take things very personally nowadays when something happens to us. We think that somebody's doing it on purpose to try and upset us, to try and push our button. Right. But you know, just like when, when somebody sends an email, you can't put emotion into an email, and you can take that email any way you want. Okay, it can sound really bad, but it's actually coming out really good. So that's the same way we need to read people is are we taking it too personally? Are we playing the victim? Are we letting emotions get in the way of our life and starting to run our life and cause these little problems? 
you, you really right. need to assess that and assess what's going on in your life that is negative and try and release it. Myself, I have taken friends that I have known for 30, 35, 40 years and told them straight out, I do not want to see you anymore because you're negative. Yeah. It, there's, there's such a negative force that I just said, you know what, I cannot be around you anymore. Thank you so much for the friendship. Goodbye. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, let's talk for a second. Sometimes you have to do that to your family members too. Oh, you know what, family members can be the worst. <laughs> Whenever I'm removing curses and spells and that type of thing, there's always somebody in the family who yeah. is jealous, somebody who wants what you have, and because you're family members, well, they should you should share it with them or something like that. And, right. and it ends up that negative thought gets thrown toward you, and sometimes these people will even go as far as secretly practicing different little rituals in their bedroom with the lights off and black candles burning in, in a pentagram and stabbing your picture with a knife. I mean, that's all it takes to, to create that kind of energy towards you. The family can be a very, very bad influence on you. So, number one, you don't want to piss off your family members. Number two, yeah. send your family love and light. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, you don't always have to interact in their bad behavior either. You know, um, there's been instances where I've noted, you know, in the past, it was just like, you know, you know that old excuse when you go to a family event or something, they say, well, it's always been like this. What's your problem? And it's sort of like, you know, I just don't, I don't want to play in that sandbox anymore. And you have the right to say that. You don't want to play in that sandbox anymore, and you don't want to be in that frequency. You're just not interested in that. Yeah, if something does not vibrate with you, and I always say, you know, if you need to make a decision to do something, so you're you're going to a family reunion and you know that this thing is going to turn out to be a drink fest and a, and a button yeah. pushing fest and somebody's going to talk bad about you. If it feels good in your heart, and it's called thinking heart mind, if it feels good in your heart not to go, then don't go. If you need to make a decision, instead of analyzing it with pros and cons and thinking linear. Think with your heart, or we call it a gut feeling. It's my gut telling me not to go. So if you don't go, what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to talk about you anyway if you're there or not. So if you don't go, you've made a better choice for yourself. Yeah, so really when they're doing a lot of work with you, you know, that's just about going back uh, – you know, let's say you turn around and you clear off your plate, you don't want to be going out and dabbling, dabbling in the cesspool again. And that's really important because if you are really helping someone with your work and you say probably this isn't a good thing and they turn around and do it anyway, then kind of it's like, okay, but, you know, then you look at it and you say, oh, we're just not getting anywhere and this is, you know, this is what it is, what it is. And some people will n not knowingly, Still, they will, you know, they don't really know if they are still doing that all the time. In other words, it's sort of like um, I really want to quit drinking and I'm not going to drink at the bar, but I didn't know that you put vodka in my spaghetti every day. Do you know what I mean? So in other yeah. words, you're, uh, you're unconsciously going in, into those spaces anyway and you just don't know that you shouldn't be in there. So you really do take a lot of effort in saying, you know, Potentially, this is probably not a good thing for you, and, you know, it's up to the person to make that decision. That's exactly it, and this happens to us every day where we have to make this decision. Do I do this? Do I do that? Oh, I really don't want to go there today, but if I don't, yeah. they're going to talk about me. So, you know what? Do what's right for you, and what other people think about you is their own little problem. But, of course, you don't want people thinking negatively about you. So if mm -hmm. that happens, if you decide not to go somewhere, send that party love and light, and then nothing is going to come back at you and start to affect you. And also, to the idea, you know, of people leaving jobs now. We see this almost every day, and I'm sure you hear it. Um, people are saying, I just can't do that job anymore. It, you know, I, I've done it for 30 years. I thought I'd retire there, but something is just off. Can't do it. Or people will say, I went in for the job interview, and it was like, oh, my gosh, you know, I, I had a, couldn't run fast enough from the place. So I think that's about the same thing, the same concept, right? It, it certainly is. You're, you're going to find that the right thing, you'll know it when you're there. You'll get that feeling mm -hmm. in your heart. You'll know deep down inside that this is where I need to be. When I started doing this business, I rented a place maybe 10 blocks down the street from where I am right now, 
and I signed a one-year lease. And then I came into this area of town further south. I found this healthcare center called Cascai Holistic Healthcare Center. I walked in just to have a look, and I said, I need to be here. I went right back. Yeah. I broke my lease. I gave the guy an extra 500 bucks and says, no, i got to be at this place. You just know that you got to be somewhere. Follow your intuition. Follow your gut. It knows. You know, it's funny we're talking about this because I can remember when I came back to Louisiana, I um, found this office to work in, and I tried so hard to to make it work. And, you know, every day put on the front, you know, it's going to be great, do everything you're supposed to be doing, you know, mingle with the staff and the people. And they came back with this, you know, that, um, oh, I wasn't a fit for the office. And when I turned around, I just kind of like left it, and I, I knew that I was forcing myself to go there because I needed to be able to have a place to go, you know. And eventually over the years, I think it was about five or six years after that, the office had all kinds of problems, legal issues. Ten years after that, the doctor is almost dying, you know. Twelve years after that, you see the place is up for sale. So, you know, you kind of say, turn around and say, you know, maybe it wasn't me. Maybe it was just the place. <laughs> Things are meant to be. You have to follow that intuition. Yeah, it's kind of tough, you know, when, you, when you're out there and you say, but, 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 you know, I think the words suffering, but, and victim need to go to the curb. You know, we have to say, but <laughs> it is, right? <laughs> it exactly is what it is. is. Yes, it is, it is what, what it is, is at this moment. <laughs> Don't try and figure it out. Just go with it. Yeah. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Can you share with the listeners how to be able to find out more information about you and uh, how you do work uh, with clients? That would be great. Absolutely. My website is chriskaler.net, C-H-R-I-S-K-E-H-L-E-R.net. You don't want to do .com. That's a completely different Chris Mm -hmm. Kaler. He got .com before I got .com. So Mm chriskaler.net. I am on Facebook. I do have about 250 different videos on YouTube, all my radio shows that I've done with wonderful people like Jeanette. You can listen to the (laughs) archives. I got a lot of short little three four minute videos that i talk about certain things and give philosophy on on different things you can get a good idea on on how things work in this office so please visit my website visit my youtube channel educate yourself a little bit if it feels right in your heart to give me a call and do some work with me then do it yeah and it's all about just taking a leap of faith you know it can't hurt and that's what i say to people all the time what do you have to lose you really have nothing you know if you go in for surgery and they take something out well then you lost something okay but these these type therapies and treatments you and i both do is just you don't have anything to lose and all you have to do is take a chance and once you take the chance then you can start saying oh this feels right or oh that doesn't and then you can say can you help me in another way so it may or may, you may say, you know, the first time, oh, this doesn't feel right, I'm not really sure, and be honest and open and authentic and say that because then the person who's trying to help you can turn around and say, okay, how about we try it differently or how about we look at it a different way? And really that's all about giving each other a chance. That's exactly it. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you with us. Many blessings, Jeanette. We will talk to you very soon. And to your listeners, please, again, check out my website. I'd love to hear from you. Great. Thank you so much. If you'd like to find out more information about Chris, his website is on the bottom of today's show page. Please just click on there and go directly to it. And have a great day. You know, if if you're really uh, hitting that wall, and I'll tell you, I've hit many, many walls, cement ones, you know, ceilings, floors. My health has hit, hit things, my life. Believe me, we've all been there, but it's about reaching out and saying, I need help, I don't know how, I don't know why, or don't know what I can do, but I need help. And really, that's what it's all about. So please do reach out. Chris's website is on the bottom of today's show page, and have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us today here on Alternative Medicine and Wellness. It has been a pleasure to be with you, and we hope you found more information that will be able to make your life just a little bit easier. You know, it's not an easy trip all the time in this life, and sometimes we say, you know, if I could just maybe hear it from somebody else, or maybe hear that someone else's story might be similar to mine, or maybe just 
gain a few extra tips to make my journey a little bit easier. Please join us on Health Blast Radio every day for the year 2015, where we will be having so many different practitioners, uh, all kinds of authors, just regular people like you and I having a casual conversation about a different topic almost every day. Check out our website for more information on the Women Over Age 50 group. It is drjeanettegallagher.com. You can always just Google my name, Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and you will find out so much more information about upcoming radio shows, about other websites I have, other programs we are currently doing. And if you just need help, please pick any of the websites, any of the links, and send me a private message. Thank you so much for joining us today on Health Blast Radio. It's been an absolute pleasure, and please, just in the morning, before you reach for that cell phone or the television remote or even your glasses, open your eyes and say, thank you, God, for another day. It's been a pleasure. And have a great day.